Ladies and gentlemen, this is Does a Transfer Show Series 6. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man with the iron blue, Mr. Dowell Johnson. I'm not used to doing this transfer show because it's been such a while since we've actually done a transfer show. It's been about nearly six months now, maybe five, six months since the first, since the last transfer show episode, which was... I think at the end was that in August. Um, so yeah, that's why I pressed the wrong one. Well, welcome everyone who's joined. Welcome to CV Six and Has His Transfer Show. It's a moment I've been waiting for for ages, um, and it is good to get back on the channel again. It's good to be back with Does Transfer Show. You know, I've been really looking forward to this series. Um, and of course, I can't put the guest in the description because I can't copy and paste the thing on uh, Streamlabs. Streamlabs is just useless. We're a bit late because of uh, Streamlabs. Uh, we had a couple of problems with the video capture device uh, being in the wrong place and we couldn't get that sorted. So that took a while. I uh, do apologise about being late, of course. Uh, not like me normally, but, you know, we are live and it's good to see everyone back in the live chat again. For series six so a lot to talk about this evening um we'll have a look at the comments quickly before we get into tonight's guest um before people do ask we've had we've done we've done this transfer show series with regards to guests a bit differently this time um and this isn't favoritism or anything i've not favoritized anyone i've just thought i'd give you know maybe i've asked a lot of people whether they want to come on people said yeah people said they can't um but I've tried to give people, you know, who haven't been on the channel much, you know, maybe, you know, give them a chance to come on the channel. And I've asked a lot of people, so it's not just these four. Um, I haven't favoritised anyone. Uh, welcome here, Joe Jumpin. Good evening, David Hoyle. Joe Willer, thanks for joining the stream. It is back indeed. Sorry, I'm late. Good song choice. Is this every Thursday? Yes, it is. That's from Nemia. When does it start now? Well, we already started. Um... <coughs> I've not been in one of these streams before, what happens? Well, we talk about transfers. Uh, I mean, you can probably tell by the title. Um, <laughs> woo, let's go, says Bluetube and Joe. The intro start. By the way, this is a new intro. Um, and I wouldn't worry about the copyright because I don't give a crap about this copyright stuff because I had it once. Uh, is Joe one of the guests and is David as well? Joe as well. Joe, the, possibly Joe. Um, it depends on if it uh, depends on whether the guest that I've messaged for the 6th of February gets back to me or not so if it, if it doesn't then of course it'll be Joe I've got maybe got maybe got Joe's a backup Joe asked if you could do it um, but yeah welcome everyone who's joined so uh, doesn't Joe you're going to Derby and Saturday yes uh, should let people who really want to come on over than people you ask well I just thought I'd try and do it a bit differently for once um I do normally do a first come first serve basis, but you, you do get people who just mourn about having the same people on. So I just thought I'd do it a bit differently for once, and it's a bit, it's a bit different. So a bit of a unique way of doing it, I'd say. But anyway, enough yakking from me. Um, let's welcome tonight's guest, who is an Ipswich Town fan and vlogger, and has actually made an appearance on the BBC Radio Suffolk. Um, so we're joined by a very special guest, and it's the man from Bluetube. It just uh, wait till the music stop. It's Mr. Regan Tuck. <laughs> First of all, just want to say a massive congratulations for getting on uh, BBC Radio Suffolk, by the way. That must have been a bit of a special Thanks. day for you. That's a 
that'll have been a bit of a special one for you, that. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, um, let's, let's first off talk about yourself, obviously. You've had a very successful year last year. Um, gained a lot yeah. more subs than you don't know if it's more subs than you thought you'd get. Um, I definitely yeah. got more than I expected. Um, but you're one in sort of a small town, but you're meeting players, you're meeting Ipswich players, Ipswich fans, you're getting known in the Ipswich newspaper as well. So, you know, yeah. it must have been a bit of a special year for you last year. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. 2009, you know, I started the channel just over a year ago now. And to be totally honest with you, I didn't expect it to blow up this much. I wouldn't say it's blown up massively, but I've got pretty big. Um, I had some cool experiences, don't get me wrong, getting relegated to League One wasn't very nice mm. at the same time it has affected my channel a bit you know it doesn't grow as much in league one i found that championship is really useful for helping me get subscribers but i, I don't know, care it's just setting myself up for life with uh, the experiences and stuff like that yes very true very true i mean yeah going down to league one probably not ideal for years but at the end of the day what could you do because i mean you, you didn't actually have a bad team on paper it's just Games didn't go your way and stuff, and that's what happens these days. It was a special year last year, Scotty B's pod, when Ipswich got relegated. And I think it would be a special year for Ipswich when Norwich get relegated. Because yes. that's probably going to happen this season. Well, I only think, if we go up. <coughs> sorry, yes, sorry, mate. Hello, does famous Pete has arrived. And also, to celebrate Does's Transfer Show's first episode of the new series, it's a can of iron brew to celebrate. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Mask video, didn't you? Hey, say that again. You had that in your mask video. Yeah, yeah. Um, always, always, oh, I have to have it on my streams, otherwise I get questioned. <laughs> yes. Well, we got a lot to get through, so we'll first of all talk about a couple of Ipswich Towns transfers. I don't know much about Ipswich transfer news at the minute, so I'll leave it to no, the man who knows I'm... all about Ipswich. And funny enough, Nick Muller isn't in the stream. Yeah, but strange one. Yes, so uh, Where is it, Miller? I'll leave. I'll... No. With all the, I'll be pretty quick because not much has happened. There's been more rumours than actual transfers. I don't believe we've signed anyone yet. Uh, there's been a few players that's gone out. Um, Jordan Roberts, he's joined Gillingham on loan until the end of the 2019-20 season. That happened today. Uh, he's been a good player. We've played him in our cup games, but as we're not in any of the cups anymore, uh, the only way he's going to get game time is going out on loan. And he's a, he's a class player, going out to a pretty decent club in Jelly, and we've played him twice now. He shouldn't really be a threat to us. Uh, but yeah, best of luck to him. Um, there's been no... Apart from that, it's been more rumours than actual um, transfers happening mm. and people going about. Toto Tiala is a fan favourite at the start of the season, but is slowly developed uh, into uh, one of the fans not so much of a favourite um, like Phil Jones. a few poor games and uh, unfortunately some of the Ipswich supporters have been giving him a bit of abuse on social media he's deleted all his posts on Instagram race to Ipswich Town and there's rumours of him moving on to Bolton so uh, mm. that, I, I, he's, he's a good night my, I, person I, I've met him before he's very nice uh, he's, he's quite humble and you know he'll do well at Bolton because he's he, he'll be good at that kind of level so uh, but yeah there's like I said there's there's not much transfer news at the moment mm. we're rumoured to be getting maybe a right back from Newcastle but apart from that nothing too big so I'll let you move on yeah. elsewhere but I do know the so just came through on my phone in Nottingham Forest uh, after Eddie Nikita. Eddie Nikita. Mm. There's been a lot Nikita, of teams. There's been... Oh, it's been... Like Enketia, actually, I think his name is. There's a lot of people yeah. who've been after that uh, Enketia from Leeds United. Um, I swear he used to be yeah. an Arsenal. He used to be an Arsenal player. I swear he was. But, yeah, he is. He's at Arsenal um, right now. He's just came back from a loan at Leeds. Yeah, I thought he was. But... You know, I mean, when he was at Leeds, he, he's quite a good player at Leeds, I have to admit. Um, yeah. He scored a few important goals for them. Um, yeah. Who's, who's it wanting in Nottingham Forest? 
yeah, not enforced. And there's a few other teams I can't remember who else are wanting him. Yeah, um, he's obviously going to be quite a big player because he's not going to get the game time at Arsenal. He needs, so, well, no, because you know, they don't play the youth clubs sports. Go out on loan, then. They don't play the reserves the majority of the time. But yeah, I think Nketi has been one of those players who um, has, has been a, a, a brilliant player for them, I have to admit. And if if he continues to form, that he's, if he goes to Forest and continues to form that he's on the minute, you know, you could be looking at a possible 15, 20 goals a season striker, a bit like what Sambalonga used to be, but of course Sambalonga at the minute yeah. manages about 10, probably that. Um, I? I mean, he has managed 15 the last two Sambalonga. seasons. Though. Last two seasons he's managed 15. We'll have a look at the comments here. Um, Scotty Reese put his hiding in his fucking arse. Uh, does his bother listening? Nah. Never get bored, and this this is a fantastic, uh, fantastic show. Really love doing it, so I never get bored. Um, it's got yeah, I came back. Transfer show for uh, David is later. Uh, let's have a look. Um, I was late. Can't sorry, I'll check it. Hold on a second. Joe's put. He is. He is what? What and catch you? You want to? You just proved yourself one. I don't know what. Oh, is he going about with some belonger? Oh, yeah. Um, David's put West Ham want to sign Maran Fellaini from Shandong Luneng. Who? Oh. It's a Chinese, Chinese team. <laughs> it's a Chinese team, mate. Yeah. Maran Fellaini was terrible at United. Whenever. Yeah. But when, when, when he left Manchester United, the entire. Well. All the United fans around the world were literally cheering in the pups because they did not like him at all. No. He moved to uh, he moved to Shandong Luang. Um, he wasn't that bad. I don't really watch the Chinese Super League though because it's never on telly. Um, but he doesn't look that bad. And of course, who's he moving to? West Ham. Moving back to the Premier League. Is that a right decision? I don't know. Yeah, I can I can just tell you. He won't get paid as much at West Ham as he did at Manchester United. Because United's wage bill is sky high, I have to admit. Um, Marlon Fellaini for West Ham. I mean, I don't think he'd do that great at West Ham because I don't think he's really ever been a Premier League player apart from when he was at Everton. But other than that, since then, he's been playing like a Championship or League One play. He's not been that brilliant. So I don't know whether that would be a great sign yeah. for West Ham United. There was the... The in, West Ham yeah. manager is obviously David Moyes, who got the best out of um, Fellaini whilst in the Premier League whilst he was at Everton. So, oh, yes. Yes, you're quite right, actually, yes. That was before... Um, yeah, that was before he became manager of Manchester United, and that was a bit of a... That went completely pear-shaped, a bit like Van Gaal's. Yeah. Um, and Jose's third year, that went pear-shaped. But yeah, we'll get on to this list of transfers we've got. By the way, we do not have a klaxon tonight. Um, so what we'll do is, I don't know when this is going to end. Um, but what we'll do is, we'll get through all of these, do a bit of talk and, you know, do a bit of final thoughts and then that'll be it. So we're not going to have a klaxon for this series because it was a bit pointless, to be quite honest, putting a time in the middle. So um, as it's only the first episode there won't there's not as many transfers as there normally is to talk about first of all we're going to start with Middlesbrough FC a couple of signings a couple of departs um a couple of rumors and a couple of done deals there is uh Sambalonga still getting linked by teams like Aston Villa and stuff there's a lot of teams after Sambalonga now um Demo Mandolf was uh having a medical at West Ham and that unfortunately failed well well for for West Ham it unfortunately failed for them because they noticed there was a problem with him because of the injury which is good news for Boa because I don't think a lot of people wanted Randolph to go anywhere especially for four million which is one million less than what we bought him um so yeah. we paid five million they were going to pay four hey right. now what's Joe's put Hold on a second, just getting a message here. How? Oh well, 
Fair enough. Joe's just messaged me saying that uh, he, he said he'll tune in next time. He's... All right. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. right. Um, where are we up to? So, we on to Bova. There was a Sombolonga, Wandover. I don't think either of them is really going to go, to be quite truthful. We've got mm-hmm. Marcus Brown, who was signed in the summer. Um, he's gone. To... <laughs> um, what I had, what I thought with Marcus Brown was he wasn't brilliant, to be quite honest. Um, wasn't really the sign that I don't think we were really looking for. And the only time he really played, he got injured or he got suspended, so he wasn't particularly brilliant. Um, he's now gone to David Hoyle's rivals, Oxford United, um, to League One, which I think fair enough because I think a player of his calibre. You know he will bring a bit more, bring a bit more to Oxford than he does West Ham. He'll get more game time as well. At the same time, I'll just twist myself over here because uh, I don't know what's going on here. Um, let's have a look. So we have bought in a few players. Bought in Patrick Roberts from uh, Manchester City. He was obviously the former Celtic winger, um, and he's currently playing as a right winger for the ball at the minute. He didn't do too bad in his first game against Tottenham Hotspurs. Uh, there's a lot of people who are quite critical with players who don't play particularly brilliant. But I thought Patrick Roberts did uh, prove himself a bit. He played quite well against Spurs. But of course, he's one of those players, you know, you, you can't really judge players who have just come in until they've played about at least five games or something like that, you know. Um, Lucas Nemechia uh, is a Deutsch under-21 international who has... Uh, signed for Borough on loan to the end of the season, same as Patrick Roberts, both to the end of the season. Um, also Marcus Brown to Oxford, that is to the end of the season as well. So there's been quite a lot of stuff going on with Borough the last couple of days. Um, don't know if you know, I don't know if you know half of these players I'm on about. <laughs> no, not, not, not really. Obviously Darren Randall, Randolph, maybe, but yeah, not Randolph. many of the others. Do you do you do you think a Samba is going to leave the club at some point? I don't know. Uh, how old is he now? Oh God! Uh, I think late twenties. Maybe even for I think he's late twenties. Yeah, is is he's he's got a few years left in him. And I think if he's going to go anywhere, he'd probably set the championship maybe for a few years. But playing on his day, but he's an I I don't know, to be honest. I think he'll leave. I don't reckon he'll stay and play out his career at Middlesbrough, but he's, he's, he's a good. I reckon he'll. I reckon he'll. So. I think my connection's lagging on the call at times. I don't know what's going on there. Hopefully that improves. Yeah, he's 27. Um, so he's a bit of a... You know. He's, he's one of those players who's... He's in his late 20s, you know. As, as yeah. I think I all, as we all it's thought. Too bad. Liam Kelly's joined uh, Flame and Oxford United on Long West season from F- Feyenoord as well. You'll get more game time there, trust me. Can't see he's doing much in the transfer window, says Scotty B. Uh, he's not a ball fan, does a lot of pressure on the lad. Well, you know, hey, hey, there's people like, um, there's people that I've had on before who aren't ball fans and they know quite a bit about them, so you never know. You never know. Never know unless you ask, you know, that's what I always say. Uh, Miss Patrick says, Scotty B. Scotty, uh, sorry, Stoke City. Wedding and Cardiff interest in the move of Shrewsbury Town midfield to Joss Lawrence. That's from David Hoyle. Don't know that much about him, to be quite truthful. Um, yeah, some longest 27. Check mailbox. Oh, what's he sent? It's a photo of Peter and Nana in Brew. Right, okay. Fine. Okay, that it. Uh, right, what else are we looking at? Uh, so that's those two done. Um... Have you watched? Do you watch the Bundesliga? Me. Yeah. Yeah, I 
Oh, which a bit like I know, like that there's the teams that are and stuff, and a few the players. Like, yeah, keep up with that. Well, let's if I mention the Deutsche Fußball Meisters for the twenty ninth time have done a pre contract agreement with a certain goalkeeper from Schalke Nothia known as Alexander Nubel. Now the reason it's a pre-contract is because at the minute he is uh, suspended from his red card um, it was against it was a one day home game so I got it, it was against now but it was because of uh, I think he might have stuck a leg up too high or something came out with a very rash challenge so it was a red card the Iron Brew is still here uh, let's have a look here <laughs> No, just put no disrespect to this lad. He's a great guy. I just can't wait for the summer series. Hope we have the regulars back on. Oh, that's fair enough. So, yeah. I just thought yeah. I'd, I just thought I'd give other people a chance because a lot of people don't like seeing the regulars on. You, you, you get people who, you know, yeah, people. Well, people well, well, technology isn't the greatest in the world unless it's talking about it's which town or the league that we're yeah. in. So, uh, I don't blame you for saying that's gross. He, did, he said no disrespect to lad. So, you know. Yeah. But a lot of people... Uh, it seems a lot of people want the regulars back on. Um, well, the regulars aren't going to be able to be back on till next series because we already... Because all of our slots are full. Apart from the sixth minute, still trying to find out. Six could be Joe. Um, we don't know exactly what is going to happen with that because Joe Nick Miller has joined. Come on, Nick. Oh, Nick Miller's actually joined. Well, thank you for joining in the end. Um... Where are we up to? Yeah. So Alexander Nubel is 23 years old and Bayern have agreed a five-year deal. But the completed deal will be on the 1st of July. So the deal will not be completed fully until the 1st of July because um, it is pre-contract. Obviously, it's going to stay to, it's going to stay to Schalke, obviously. But at the same time, he's already told him that he's not signed a new contract with them. So I think once his contract goes, it's gone completely. They're gonna just take him straight to buying five year deal as well. So that means it's gonna be competition for the goalkeepers because we still have um, Bayern still have Manuel Neuer, Alexander Nubel is gonna come in in July. Um, it's been all like David Stark. So that's about four keepers. I might have missed one or two, but there's four keepers. That's including. That'll be including Newbold. So at the minute, three goalkeepers. When he comes, it'll be four. What does that mean for the likes of Sven Olwijk and David Stark? Does that mean David Stark is going to leave? Does that mean Sven Olwijk is going to leave? Because Sven Olwijk, don't get me wrong, is a good keeper, but he's never going to be Bayern's number one keeper ahead of Manuel Neuer. The only time he ever plays, the only time really ever starting over Bayern is if Manuel Neuer gets injured. Which I think a lot of people will say is true. Do you, do you, uh, you see, have you seen much of uh, how do you eh? I was about to say how do you highlight the text like Nick has I've always wondered how do you highlight the text like he's highlighted Bluetooth when he sends that message oh you, the, has he put at Bluetooth I don't know is that what you do is if you put at Bluetooth is that Not clear, but has that done it? Yeah, yeah. If you if you at somebody, it'll come up with their name in blue. That's what it is. Oh, Bath okay. staying at Millwall. La la. A lot of comments coming in here. Yes. <laughs> uh, nice. La la la. Oxford have announced a sign of central defender Rob Atkinson from Eastleigh. Don't know much about him because I don't really watch the National League unless it's Hardicon United. Other than that, that's the only team I really watch. So I keep an eye on uh, Right. Now, another thing for Bayern is Oliver Kahn. Uh, a lot of people will probably know a lot about him. Actually, um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. I've just got distracted for a minute there. Actually, we weren't on to that yet. Um, we were still talking about Alexander Nuda, were they? Um... Have you seen much of Nubel? Frank Nubel? Yeah, the Schalke goalie. Uh, no, to, not massively, to be honest. 
Like, right. when I say, like, uh, I follow, like, the Bundesliga, like, so I haven't got massive knowledge, but, like, you know, I, I keep up to date with the transfer rooms and all the, like, these big teams, but, like, and Fortuna Dusseldorf, because it's which have a huge connection with them. But, uh, right. like, not massively, like, like that. So, but I keep mm. up to date. Yeah. You're one of those people who keeps up to date with the scars. Yeah, and stuff like that. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. A lot of people knew that. I've got to admit. Yeah. Isn't that funny? You mentioned Fortuna Dusseldorf, but Nick Muller said, uh, funny enough, um, (laughs) Nick Muller, I think Nick Muller said fought a a Fortuna Dusseldorf in one of the other streams. Can't remember which one it is, but I think he's, I mean, Nick Muller's partially German at the same time. But he's, is uh, is yes, group, as well as Scotty, I know. Um, Scotty, I can quickly see that from his profile picture. Yeah, yeah but Nick Muller uh, is it's actually past German. Well, he said he is. Um, and at the same time, he said Fortuna Dusseldorf from one of the streams. I'm thinking, oh, so that's it. Who on earth is this old channel guy? I've never heard of this guy. Um, can't beat the old regulars. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I missed them too, mate. <laughs> we'll, we'll get the regulars on. Not as good as them. We'll get the regulars on next series because uh, we've already got all the things agreed for this series at the minute. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do the first come first serve thing. I think next series because uh, it, it seems to it seems to work a lot better. But still, I'm I'm enjoying I've enjoyed you know how I've done it this way, a bit different to normal. Um. So, Alexander Noodle, obviously we've spoke, we've spoke enough about him. Oliver Kahn, I was going to talk about, was next. Uh, another FC Bayern München legend. In his time at Bayern, his 14 years at Bayern Munich, he retired in 2008. Um, won eight titles in the 2001 UEFA Champions League. He played 632 competitive games. He got actually competitive appearances during his 14 years at FCB. 632 for a goalkeeper. Very, very good. Um, he's now part of the FC Bayern München club executive board. And by the looks I of like things... I like him with stuff like the Hamza Football Club. When the player comes back, there's been a legend. It helps right. out. It's always, it's always nice to see them back. It's always nice to see them back. Both have had a top window. Yeah, they've had a good start at the transfer window. Positive start. It's loan deal, man. Um, you you needed it. Jonathan Woodgate needed to get it some players in then you're in a difficult position so you just need to hang on in the championship I guess don't you yeah I mean we've actually been on top farm at the minute yeah we beat, if we beat well, if we beat Derby at home a hell of a result against Tottenham you know if we beat Derby at home then that's now six yeah. home games in the war unbeaten get, see, get oh, we Rooney get a point well. against him. and against Rooney a Manchester United legend and oh yeah, Khan won the World Cup as well at the same time with the Deutsch, yes. Uh let's have a look. So he's due to succeed um Karl Heinz Rumenig's role as Bayern Munich chairman um at the end of the, at the end of two thousand and twenty one. So he has possibly a long career at Bayern in the well, as backroom staff, you know. So it'd be interesting to see how he does if he, when he is chairman. That's not going to be till about 2022, though. Let's have a look. Ethan Hamilton. I think a lot of Manchester United fans will probably know about this guy. He doesn't often get played much, but he is one of Manchester United's youth players on the reserves who never really gets played. He's gone to Bolton Wanderers on loan. Now, Bolton, I have to say, for a team who, I think at the start of the season, you know, with the points, points deduction and they're now on positive points you know so they've come up leaps and bounds completely considering and South Bend United have been on positive have had oh, no points and they were almost getting overtaken mm-hmm. so Bolton yeah, have done very Bolton. well this I season I oh, so do I like, 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 like Bolton Wanderers I mean, yeah, no, not, not, I'm not saying that's the bottom, but you know, bottom ones is a club that I respect massively because they've struggled at recent times. And the point deduction, probably a bit harsh, but at the end of the day, it's the EFL rules and what can you do about it? Um, 
but they left themselves in a bit of a big heap of trouble. And luckily they've just escaped a points deduction um, because they could have had a points deduction if uh, the EFL were more, were more pain in the bumps to them. But they weren't, so, you know, they've been a bit lucky at times. But they are doing right quite well in the transfer window. They've signed a couple of players. They've signed even Hampton from Manchester United. They've signed... Um, Fair... Fair... I can't remember his name. Some guy with a very long name. I don't know what his name is. Um, but they've signed a few players from the trans in the transfer window. They've even signed one of Ipswich's players as well, if I'm not mistaken. You mentioned yeah. that earlier. Who was it you mentioned earlier? Well... They bought one of our players at the start of the season, um, Jay Man- no, um, Emmanuel. Uh, he was from some right back, but he wasn't going to get anything over here. Uh, and they also got our ex player, Daryl Murphy, um, uh, who we should have really tried to get. But um, they, they're trying to sign Toto and Ciara at the moment, but it is not a done deal. Yeah. Fair enough. So yeah, as you can see, Bolton, I'd say, probably been the busiest team in transfer window this season. Uh, not just this season, but in this transfer window so far. We're only like nine days into the transfer window. Yeah. Bolton signed Jordan from Ipswich. Says Nick Bonner. Sorry, you just said that. But, um, let's have a look here. Anything else? Uh, Martel Witzmeyer. A lot of people won't know who this is. Um, practically no one unless you watch unless you've uh, looked at a team called Wolfsburger in the Österreich Bundesliga this is Austrian team an Austrian team who currently play in the UEFA Europa League and are in the Europa League round of 32 I believe um, which is a, at the minute they're a very good strong team Barnsley have signed a player called Martin Wittmeyer who is a quality player for them He's been one of their star players this season. And I'm surprised yeah. he's, they've actually let him go. Um, but Barnsley, you have a very good that, signing. But he was always going to go, but I wouldn't have said now. Yeah, very very good player. So, to hold on. Good luck to him at Barnsley. Barnsley will probably do quite well with him. Uh, also news that Leroy Sané will not be a Bayern Munich player this window. Now, this was a very interesting one. Um... Uh, well, I don't know what to make of it because Bayern have Coleman, they've got Nabry, they've got Alfonso Davies, who at the minute is playing as left back because David Alaba doesn't play after that. Um, but if I'm truthfully honest, Bayern maybe don't need him yet. So I think Leo Sane has probably made the right decision, staying at Manchester City and trying yeah. to push for title because he is one of Manchester City's uh, main starters. And one of their main players. Yeah. So he's not going to sign for Bayern this window. They've always been the Champions League or something like that as well now, couldn't they? Yeah, they could do. if They'll come the out and right? win something, 100%. Mm. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if Pep left at the end of the season, though. Nah, I wouldn't be too surprised either. Um, so Simon won't join Bayern this month. Bit of a loss for Bayern um, at the same time, but we got Coleman, got Alphonse Davies, got players who can play in that left wing position. But Sane would have probably been a good addition to the squad because he has the pace. Though so does Coleman. But it would mean that Coleman would have to work harder for his place in the first team. But it doesn't make the slightest of difference, really, because Coleman, I, th- I think even if he was there, Coleman would probably end up playing ahead of him anyway. Wolfsburg race, he finished, but. Hey. Did they? I swear they're in the Europa League round of 32. I'm sure they were in the draw. Or am I thinking of the wrong, the wrong team? It's definitely Wolfsburg with the uh, Austrian League. Let me have a look here. Oh, that's why. I've done I've done that before. I've got them mixed up with uh, VFL Wolfsburg from the German League. Okay. <coughs> I've done that before. 
Well, that was a waste of time talking about him then, because I've got the wrong team. <clears throat> oh, brilliant. Yeah, I knew it was one of Wolfsburg who got the wrong one. Dillingham have captured the sign of Roberts on loan from Ipswich till the end of the season. Uh, that's from David Hoyle. I think the team you're thinking of is Wolfsburg. Yeah, Wolfsburg, Wolfsburg. Cruise to Manchester United, that's an old room as well, back in 2013. Oh, that's come on for ages. A lot of people are still thinking that United are going to get Bruno Fernandes. Uh, I mean, that's gone on for a long time now. We'll be looking at a probably higher price than that, but I doubt United will get him. Van der Beek's also been linked of a United move as well. I mean, I doubt that's going to happen. I doubt United will do much in this transfer window, if I'm quite honest, because just the way the club's been run at the minute, um, <laughs> it's not been one great. Let's just admit that. Um, a couple of we've got a few final ones. Um, Danny Drinkwater to Aston Villa. Okay. No, Danny yeah, Drinkwater. That's that's, the, oh, no, that's a good one to be fair. Interesting, I have to admit, because Danny Drinkwater was obviously a Chelsea player. Wait, yeah, he was with at Burnley, Chelsea. didn't he? Last season, he was no, at Chelsea. The then he was at less. No, he was at Leicester then Chelsea, wasn't he? Then he was Burnley. Although I got it in the wrong order. And now he's at... Regardless, he's at Aston Villa now alone. I believe to the end of the season. Um, that was probably a, a wise move for him because I think he'll get more game time than he did at the doors, the doors of the three clubs. Yeah. Um, and obviously he'll probably be one of the main starters for them because Villa have been needing a few decent players. Look at Sheffield United. They haven't really signed that much. I mean, they signed a few players, but they didn't sign that much in the window and they're fifth in the league so it just shows that you know one signing could make the difference for them Wine Brewster's gone to Swansea um, actually I don't know why I wrote that one down I should have saved that one for when Marley is on which is next week um, I'll save the Wine Brewster the Swansea one I'll save that one for next week when Marley's on because Marley is a Swansea he is a Swansea fan Scott Sinclair to Preston now this is one of the bigger ones and this is actually the final one. Um, Scott Sinclair, a very good player for Celtic. Yeah. Very good player uh, in the Premier League. That was Scott Sinclair, wasn't it? Um, yeah. He's gone from the Scottish Premier League to the Championship. Was that a wise decision for him? Well, he'll probably get a lot more game time at Preston. Yeah. It's an undisclosed, it's an undisclosed for eight minute. We don't know. It's a weird team to go to. It is, because Preston... I would have said like, somewhere like Leeds or something brilliant. like that. I would be like... I don't know. But I think he's probably gone there to try and help Preston build up again as to work as they were in the top six originally. So yeah. Maybe try and see if they can get back up towards it, the Premier League places. It's, it's a decent team to go to where, you know, he might get new goals over there or his career might go completely out the window. Yeah, if precisely. Go away from there. Yeah, precisely. Final one, actually. I've just realised there's one I didn't say. Former, um, I think, Man City and Sunderland midfield, Jack Wadwell, has signed... Uh, for Sheffield United, Sheffield United. Uh, 28 year old has signed for Sheffield United until the end of the season it is a loan to the end of the season mm. and yeah I think that that is a good signing for Sheffield United I mean he is about 28 now um, yeah, Jack Wadwell was it's always a strange one, you know. he did ruin his player. career quite a bit like uh, you know we haven't known much about him you know he had a lot of potential that's all we knew when he was a lot younger but his career's gone out the window, so it's a good opportunity for him to prove himself again in the Premier League at Sheffield United. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, Jack Wadwell was one of those players who, you know, he was one of those you could depend on at times. He was quite a solid player for Sunderland. Yeah. Um, does he have all his takes so far a team like Sheffield United? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Excuse me, if Preston were a decent team, how come Reading did the double over them? <laughs> I mean, Bo did get a win against them, didn't they? But, no, nah, I mean, they are, a, they are a very good team on paper. They're just the last couple of the games have been falling apart. Um, but that happens to a lot of teams, you have to remember. Joe's, Joe Jones, um, hey, I'm back. I keep coming back on and off. 
Uh, from what I've seen I've, and heard, it's interesting. I'll try and come more often to these teams. Lucky David. I mean, Boa did beat the likes of West Brom. I don't think anyone's no one's beat no one's beaten West Brom this season. I don't think, well, especially at home, because they actually beat them at their ground with the first team this season to do it <laughs> against relegation against a team who was in the relegation squad. I mean, <laughs> that's because Scott Asane is injured. Yeah, that's why we haven't seen much of him this season. But when he does play, he's quite a star man for them. Um. But that is practically it. Uh, we are over the 40 minute mark. So that's literally all we have to say at the minute. If you have any more, please do let me know in the live chat. Um, but yeah, um, is there anything else you want to say, mate? Thank you for having me on. Uh, yeah, second appearance on the channel. First of the mm-hmm. series. I'll be on for the other videos, live videos, hopefully. But yeah, thanks for having me on. Yep. No worries. Thank you very much for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, um, this has been episode number one of Daz's Transfer Show for the sixth series. Thank you all very much for joining the stream. Thank you to Regan for being on. Um, as I said, as I said, it's a bit of a new way of doing the transfer show with regards to guests. We've done it a bit of a different way than usual. Next week, we're having someone who I believe is making his debut on the channel. We are going to be joined by Marley, who is a Swansea City vlogger and Swansea City fan. Oh, Scotty B's put shame about the guest. Well, that's because the Norwich Ipswich thing, doesn't it? Um, oh, Scotty's so hard with me, man. <laughs> no, hey, it is what it is. You know, it's it's just Norwich Ipswich. He's joking, isn't it? Stuff. I hope. Yeah, 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 yeah. He will be. He, he doesn't he doesn't bully people so yeah but that'll do for us ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for joining the stream David Tyrell thanks for joining the stream as well uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll probably uh, tune in for that at some point later um, I can't guarantee that I'll be on there at the start though um, but thank you all for joining and from all of team on does this transfer show have a fantastic evening see you in a bit Ladies and gentlemen, this is Does a Transfer Show.